Cybercrime is uh, still a very, very big uh, problem, uh, a huge uh, problem for the financial sector. Uh, one of the main uh, problems is that fraudsters are smart and they outsmart a lot of the existing controls. But I would say that mobility is becoming an even bigger, bigger issue when it comes to security. So it's really disruptive to the security landscape. And the reason is that people expect, you know, the consumer expects more and more functionality, but is willing to take less and less friction, less and less um, kind of, um, you know, hassle when we talk about security. They don't want to carry devices. They don't want to um, get, you know, text codes whenever they want to do something uh, to authenticate themselves. They expect to go in, to go out, and do their business. And the problem is that the, the cyber criminals want to do the same. So how do you actually uh, solve that? How do you um, create a, a technology that can uh, help the security without increasing the friction? Uh, because let's understand that we talk about, you know, the, the, the end users, the consumers. This is something that is really troubling for the banks. Um, I was at RSA when a company called Biocatch came over to us to present the technology. Uh, what I liked about it was the fact that it was biometric, which means it's not something you know and it's not something you have. It's something you are. It's very difficult to spoof something like that. But at the same time, it was invisible, which solves the friction problem. Um, now, the way Biocatch works, uh, you may be familiar with things like keystroke dynamics and mouse tracking. These are like gesture analytics. Um, they know that they're not really uh, prevalent because they're not very accurate, and you have to wait for the user to generate enough bio data. The way Biocatch did it was basically to poke the user to give a lot of additional information uh, without changing the user experience. And this is by injecting a small challenge, invisible challenge. So let's say that you want to go to, the, to this button. Biocatch will inject a small sideways motion in this example. Um, and if you don't correct, you're going to miss that button. You always correct, and the correction pattern is very individual, very unique to the person. Uh, here are two examples. On the left-hand side, you can see a very small correction at the end. And then you can see this blue correction, which is kind of a mess at the end. Two different users, two different reactions to the same specific challenge. Another example is this. Uh, how do you actually hold the device? What happens if you tap the device? So this is one user. He is a head of fraud in one of the large banks in the UK. Uh, the blue line is the, the kind of the vertical uh, movement. That's the accelerometer data, the gyro in the device. And as opposed to that, this is uh, one of our iOS developers, our uh, iPad developers. And you can see he's a very, very tall guy. So imagine a tall guy that kind of thumps the device every time when they want to do something. And he actually makes the device, device kind of go down considerably. That's the spike that you see over there. Very different and very cons uh, consistent behavior. Last example. Uh, let's say that you just completed the page and you don't see the marks. You don't, you don't see the cursor. What happens if you don't see the cursor? Yeah. Right. You start searching for it. 25 people, everyone searches a little bit differently. You can see wide search patterns. You can see small patterns, diagonal patterns. Uh, so some of these people always search counterclockwise. So that's very, very unique and very distinctive and very consistent for them. The idea is to collect a lot of parameters without changing the user experience. So the user does not really uh, see anything, feel anything uh, different. They're doing their normal business, but uh, we collect that information, generate a profile. If any intruder now goes into the system, we know. And that's good for mobile applications and online applications. Results. So today, the system uh, can catch 90% of intrusions at about 1% false positives. We actually have a plan to reduce that to 0.1%. We have like a roadmap of additional things that we want to do. Um, the other thing is that we just launched the first um, project that's a top 50 US bank, and it took only two days to do the integration, uh, which was a JavaScript in their case, JavaScript on, on, on the relevant web pages. So it's a very, very scalable kind of uh, solution. By the way, we host it, so it's, it's a kind of a cloud uh, service rather than something that we install at the actual bank. Let's talk about the market potential for this sort of authentication. Today, the, the size of the market for user authentication is 2 billion, and these are solutions they don't really, really work right now because they are something you know or something you have, and they have a high friction. So that's the current landscape. And I think because of the mobility uh, drive, this is going to change in the next, in the next few years.
And we're going to see uh, these sort of solutions that are continuous, invisible, they don't disrupt the user experience, and they are something that is far stronger than something you know or something you have. Our team. So these are the guys that came over to RSA, uh, and I met them. I was very much impressed. After several uh, months, they asked me to join, and they, I joined as a co-founder of, uh, of Biocatch. Um, most of the company, actually, instead of the CEO and myself, are ex-military intelligence, a lot of research guys from you know, brain studies and cognitive studies and stuff like that. 12 months of current uh, burn rate, um, but we want to scale. So obviously, every startup is looking for further funding. And that's it.